<laughs> Can you tell me which one of these dinosaurs was as tall as a five-story building? <laughs> yep, Memenkisaurus was about the same height as a five-story building. Quite a view from up there, huh? <laughs> Okay, which of these dinosaurs was only as big as a cat? Perfect! Lesotosaurus was only as big as a cat. Meow! <laughs> one of these dinosaurs stood about as high as a basketball hoop. Can you tell me which one? No, Rio Arribosaurus was a little shorter than a basketball hoop. <laughs> one of these dinosaurs stood about as high as a basketball hoop. Can you tell me which one? Exactly! Albertosaurus was about as tall as a basketball hoop. His cousin T-Rex was even taller. Yikes! <laughs> Right, Rio Arribosaurus was about the size of a person. <laughs> Bye, come back later for some serious dino sizing. It's a good thing that Rinkosaurus can't come near my mom's plant. The Soros dinosaur was small, but it was speedy. Small but speedy? Hey, that sounds sort of like Wanda. I should do some research on this guy's dinosaur. Or maybe not. Look at those fangs! <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying this. Don't worry, my research. Dicynodonts only eat plants, and those tusks are for digging roots. The ferns in my yard are so much smaller than these Triassic tree ferns. Now highlighting the Cretaceous period. Now highlighting the Jurassic period. Here we go to Jurassic Tethys C, 150 million years before the present. Welcome back to the Back Bus Dinatorium. Check out everyone's reports about the age of dinosaurs. How did the dinosaurs stay warm? Did they generate their own heat like mammals? Or did they rely on the sun like reptiles do today?
Scientists aren't sure. Warm-blooded creatures don't need the sun to warm up, so they can be active at night and in the cold. Cold-blooded creatures slow down as their bodies cool down. This means they can only move quickly when it's warm. Some scientists believe that dinosaurs were cold-blooded because they were reptiles. Like reptiles, dinosaurs have small brains compared to warm-blooded creatures of the same size. Some scientists believe that dinosaurs were warm-blooded because they acted so much like mammals. They lived in herds, hunted together, took care of their young, and grew up very fast, just like mammals do today. And the answer is... The answer might be that some dinosaurs were warm-blooded and some were cold-blooded, and probably some were in between. But we'll never know for sure, unless someone can find a time machine and a really big thermometer. Any volunteers? Welcome back to the Bet Bus Dinatorium. Check out everyone's reports about the age of dinosaurs. When paleontologists decided that dinosaurs were reptiles, they thought they moved like reptiles too, legs apart, dragging their bellies. But studying their tracks and skeletons told scientists that dinos stood upright, kept their tails off the ground, and that some could run very fast. Scientists used to think that sauropods, like Apatosaurus, were too heavy to stand up on land and had to live in lakes. Now we know that if they stood in water up to their necks, the water would squeeze their lungs so hard that they couldn't breathe. We'll never be 100% right about dinosaurs. Some things we think are true may turn out to be false. But that's the fun of science. No matter how much you think you know, there's always new things to learn. Dinosaurs did not have very big brains, but that doesn't mean they were stupid. Some cared for their young, and others cooperated to hunt together. And after all, they did survive for 160 million years. They may not have sent any dinosaurs to the moon, but they were pretty smart at being dinosaurs. Simon Nathus was large and fast for its kind and had unusual teeth. Ordinary carnivorous reptiles have one type of tooth, but Cynognathus had several kinds for cutting, stabbing, and tearing meat. Before the dinosaurs, a group called the mammal-like reptiles were common all over the world. Some of these early reptiles looked a lot like mammals. Most died out before the dinosaurs arrived, but their relatives evolved into the mammals we know today, like squirrels and rabbits and gophers. Demetrodon was an early mammal-like reptile that actually didn't look very much like a mammal. Its huge sail helped Demetrodon warm its blood quickly each morning, giving it a head start on its still sluggish prey. Dicynodons were a group of big herbivores. They used their sharp beaks to take big bites of tough plants or roots. Some of them lived around swamps, and some lived in forests. The first theropods lived at the end of the Triassic and beginning of the Jurassic. Herrerasaurus and Eoraptor were small and had hollow bones. This made them light in weight, so they could run very fast. Carnivores are animals that feed mainly on other animals. They're all bipedal, which means they walked on two feet instead of four. Together, they are known as theropods. The big theropods were the largest carnivores that ever walked on land. In the Jurassic, there was Allosaurus and Megalosaurus. And in the Cretaceous, there was Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus, and Giganotosaurus. Another group of theropods, like Troodon and Gallimimus, had the best developed brains of all the dinosaurs. They also had excellent hearing and a special type of eyesight called stereoscopic vision. Sometimes paleontologists guess wrong. They used to think that dinosaurs acted like reptiles. Now they think dinos acted more like birds and mammals. The more they learn, the closer they probably get to the truth. Paleontologists think that male triceratops battled each other for mates and lived in migrating herds. Because that's how large-horned herbivores, 
like buffalo, antelope, and deer, behave today. How do scientists know so much about dinosaurs? They can tell a lot by looking at the bone. But lots of what they know comes from ideas based on looking at animals that are alive today and guessing what dinosaurs looked like long ago. Welcome back! A dash to the dash, is it? See you later! get a kick out of the Arnold Plesiosaur in Morphosaurus. You want to see what Arnold and Wanda would look like as dinosaurs? Click on Liz to morph them with the dinosaur in the little box. <laughs> well, it's not fully, but it's fun. With Morphosaurus, you get more fun for your money. That's a Carithosaurus. That's a Carithosaurus. Presto, good morphing on your part. <laughs> morphing always makes me sleep. With Morphosaurus, you get more fun for your money. Ta-da! <laughs> Morphing always makes me sleep. Ta da! Good morphing on your part. Come back if you ever want a little change. You can make a cool pass card of your Mesozoic adventure. You can decorate your pass card by dragging plants and animals from the boxes into the scene. This is going to be some card. in there. Nice touch! Come back next time you run out of pass cards. Never heard of the Tethys Sea? Don't worry, it doesn't exist anymore. But it was the Jurassic's tropical sea, and it appeared right where the continent started to split up. Plesiosaurs had large flippers that they flapped to fly through the water, just like penguins, but penguins are a little better dressed. A warm tropical sea in the Jurassic period. DA, it's the only tropical sea in the Jurassic. Besides the Tethys Sea, there's just one huge ocean surrounding all the continents. There were tons of these ammonites in the Jurassic period. Some of them grew shells that were six feet around, like this one. Lots of animals like to eat them. And they ate lots of other animals, too. Let's hop on the bus! It's takeoff time for Tanzania! Are dripping apart, 
and the dinosaurs are huge, huge, huge. Wow, look at that dinosaur fly. Actually, Wanda, that's not a dinosaur. It's a flying reptile called a pterosaur. That pterosaur is called Pterodactylus. Wow, look at that pterosaur fly. Brachiosaurus fossils have been found in Africa, Europe, and in North America. But how did they get across the ocean? According to my research, all the continents used to be joined together in one big continent called Pangaea. Pangaea began to split apart in the Jurassic, but dinosaurs could still walk from Africa to Europe and North America. All hail Allosaurus, king of the Jurassic food chain! You big goon! If nothing messes with these footprints, they'll be preserved as fossils by the time we get back to present time. That Kentrosaurus uses its spiked tail to defend itself. Easy now, Kentrosaurus. You don't have to defend yourself from me. Stegosaurus, ear clear of danger and meteor meltdown! You can help a herbivore find food in a dangerous place, but first, click on the dinosaur you want to play. Level 1. only a puny problem to a punchy poke like the Stegosaurus. Shake that tail, Steggy. The monsoon is coming, Mon. Soon. Hungry for a Stegosaur or not so lefty? Don't bite off more than you can chew. Hey, that Stegosaurus looks like Kentrosaurus and two OG Anglesaurus. As rain, Carlos. They're all Stegosaurs, but Stegosaurus is about twice the size of Centrosaurus and Tuojangosaurus. Stegosaurus is the biggest Stegosaur of all. That Apatosaurus spends almost all its time looking for food. Maybe if I find it some leaves, it'll have more time to have fun. 
That Apatosaurus should give you a pat on the back. On second thought, maybe it could just wave. That Diplodocus is just eating its way through the forest. I think now might be a good time to get off this cycad. Poor Apatosaurus. It has such a tiny head that it probably has to eat 20 hours a day, just to get enough food. That sounds like my Uncle Fred, but he never got that big. Well, I like it, what's the first experience? Hi, machine, do your thing! Cretaceous Alberta coming right up, 70 million years before the present. still have more dinos to find. Congratulations! You found the missing creature! This critter's picture is going right where it belongs, in the photo album. Let's check it out! Look at this picture! A true Troodon triumph! You've clearly captured the quintessence of this Cretaceous Albertan carnivore. Wow! You found the third and last missing creature. Just click on the gold medal when you're ready to enjoy your prize. Here's your prize! A Tyrannosaurus Rex mask for the days you want to run around like a great big carnivore. Just print it, cut it out, Tie it around your head, and you're ready to go! Congratulations on being a fantabulous photographer and a distinguished dino finder!